Welcome, everybody, to our uh, Wednesday edition of Tim at 10. It seems like it's it's been a while since we've had one of these, um, a little over a week since we've had a Tim at 10. Uh, it's been super busy uh, for everybody. I'm sure a lot of you are transitioning into back to school. Um, a lot of you are supporting virtual learners, um, and some of you are, are getting ready to open up. Uh, your program after Labor Day. So super busy time of the year, um, even for myself operating our programs. But I am so happy that you are all with me today um, when we talk about uh, maintaining composure in our after school programs. Um, this is a, a very um, sensitive topic for me and an important topic for me. Um, I began my career uh, many, many years ago working in after-school programs. Uh, so, you know, they have a very special place in my heart. Um, and, and spending so many years um, working and operating and managing after-school programs, um, you know, I, I've seen a lot and I've learned a lot. Um, the most important thing is that when our school-age children um, come to us, uh, they are like a bottle of soda. And y'all know what happens when you have a bottle of soda and you take the lid off of it and you put your finger over the bottle of soda and you shake it and you shake it and you shake it. And eventually the pressure is going to build up and become so strong, your finger won't be able to hold that pressure and it's gonna spew, you know? Um, so for our school age children, They've been in a very structured environment all day long and, you know, just shaken and shaken and shaken. So by the time they come to us, that pressure is so strong. Um, and, you know, the, the interactions that our caregivers have with them might be the icing on the cake when that soda explodes. You know, and even right now, um, you know, it, it's, it's August of 2020 right now, um, and it's not the traditional back to school time. Um, a lot of our kids are doing virtual learning right now, um, which is very different and very scary. Um, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of frustration. So even with our virtual learners, that bottle of soda is just being shaken and shaken and shaken, even for our caregivers. And and, you know, again, 32 years that I've been working um, in the early education and after school industry, um, this is a whole new ball game for us, too. Uh, we've never had to support virtual learners like we're doing right now, um, you know, and so we're learning a lot. So I know that our caregivers and our role models are also dealing with a lot of frustration, a lot of anxiety. Um, it, it's a pretty stressful um, time for everyone. That's why I thought, you know, this topic today of maintaining composure um, and being aware of your composure when working in an after-school program was so extremely important, all right? So before we get started, let's go ahead and, and everyone, let's take a deep breath. And kind of bring some calmness to the room, all right? And those of you that took a deep breath with me, you may have noticed that just stopping and taking a moment, taking that deep breath, you do feel a difference in the energy of the room. So we're going to talk about this a lot today because that's a big part of the school age program, you know, caregivers. That's a big part of their responsibility is to download that calm. All right, so again, your job description, like right up there at the top of your job description, is to download calm. It is not to create more chaos and to create more stress. All right, um, a big part of our job in after school programs is to create a safe environment that children can come to to relieve a lot of that stress that they have built up during their public school setting, all right? And when I say a big part of our job is to create a safe environment for children to come to after school, it has to be a safe environment from the child's point of view, 
all right? So not from your point of view, but from the child's version of reality. Do they feel safe when they come to your after-school program? And like I had mentioned earlier, they have been in such a, a pressured environment, a stressful environment, um, all day long at their elementary school or their charter school or their private school. When they come to us, they need to be able to rest and relax and have a stress-free environment, all right? So I really want y'all to go back and evaluate your um, after-school program. Is it structured? Is it stressful? All right, is it kind of like a military camp and everyone's got to follow what the you know military director is giving out? Or is it a safe, comfortable environment where children can breathe and just relax, all right? That's what your after-school program should be all about. But it starts with the caregiver. Now, in my world, we call them role models. Um, the, the individuals that work in my after-school programs, um, we call them role models. And I kind of adapted this from our child care minimum standards. And when you look at the basic care requirements for school age uh, programs, the very first uh, thing listed under the basic care requirements for personnel is to create an environment where children can have conversation with adults, all right? And I absolutely love that that's the first thing listed under the basic care requirements. When you're staffing your after school programs, you want to hire individuals that are role models for the children, all right? There's somebody that the kids can just come and talk to. Um, the way I look at this is that, you know, they have a teacher all day long when they're at school. They have a parent at night and on the weekends when they go home. When they're in our after-school programs, they just need a role model. They need someone they can look up to, someone that makes them feel safe, and someone that can take a little bit of that stress off of their very hectic day, all right? Now, we all know, you know, working in early education that children feed off of our emotions, all right? Um, children feed off of our emotions and we download our emotions to the children. So whatever you're feeling is what your child is feeling too. Now the difference between, you know, an infant toddler preschool classroom versus an after school program is that the adult also feeds off of the child's emotions. It goes both ways. So when you have children that come into your after school program and they're stressed and that bottle is about to blow, all right, the mirror neurons that are in our brain creates that same amount of stress in the caregiver, all right? It goes both ways with them. So it's important for your caregivers to be aware of their composure and to be able to practice composure the entire time that they're in that program because you've got to download that calm, all right? Um, I mentioned mirror neurons, all right? Mirror neurons are neurons that are in our brain. And you see this in sporting events quite often. For example, that if you're, uh, if you're watching a sporting event, um, a soccer game, and the soccer player is going to kick the ball to, to make that game-winning goal, and he kicks the ball and he misses by inches. And you see the soccer player go, oh, look up at the stands, all right? The next time you, you watch a sporting event, and when that soccer player goes, oh, you see all of the fans in the crowd also go, oh, all right? That's called mirror neurons, all right? Especially when you're expressing an emotion. Uh, we see this with young children whenever a mother is dropping off uh, the child, all right? And the caregiver is like, oh, then the kid is like, Wah! all right? Because they're going to match your emotions. Very important in an after-school program right there, your mirror neurons. When you have a role model that's working in your after-school program who's not downloading Calm, but instead they're downloading Chaos, 
then that's what you're going to get in your program is that chaos. Children are feeding off of our emotions right there. All right. So there are three building blocks that are needed to create composure in your after school program. Um, the first one I've already mentioned, and that's creating a sense of safety. All right. Children must feel safe before they can meet expectations. So your caregivers, your role models uh, need to make sure that they're creating an environment that children feel safe and stress free. All right. Uh, and again, from their point of view, the next thing that is definitely needed. All right. To maintain that composure in your after school programs is connection. All right. Uh, a big part of your caregiver and role model's job is to be able to connect with each of the, ch the children that are in that after school program. When you are in a relationship with someone, you're more willing to meet expectations, all right? And those connections that you make with those children, and remember, you're the role model, all right? Those connections are imperative. They may not be getting those connections in their public school classroom because of the amount of stress that that teacher has to, to get the child up to expectation um, to be able to pass the test or, or whatever the situation may be. And then when you look at the massive class size that a lot of our public school teachers have, um, they may not be getting that connection that they need to feel safe. All right. So your job in your after school program is to make sure that each caregiver or role model is spending at least five minutes of one on one time with each child each day. All right. Five minutes of one on one time okay, with each child each day will reduce power struggles by 50%. So I want you all to think about that half of your struggles that you have in an after school program can be eliminated by five simple minutes with each child each day. That's going to build those healthy connections. All right. Um, you know, w whenever I'm hiring people for our programs, you know, when I'm hiring an infant toddler teacher, I'm looking for someone that is a nurturer. When I'm hiring someone for a preschool pre-K classroom, I'm looking for an educator. Um, when I'm hiring someone for my after school programs, again, I'm just looking for someone that can be a role model, someone that the kids can look up to, and someone that the kids can connect with. All right. You are going to be able to make those connections when you're able to download Calm and whenever you're able to maintain that composure. Now, this takes a lot of practice, all right? Um, it takes a lot of practice to be aware of your composure, to be aware of when you have been triggered and be able to self-regulate that calm, okay? Because you can't give away what you don't have, all right? You can't lend what you don't have. So you can't download calm if you're not calm yourself. All right. And because of our mirror neurons and the fact that we feed off of each other's emotions and our kids are already coming in the door ready to blow. All right. It creates a very tense situation. Safety, connections, and then you can get to problem solving. All right. Which is desperately needed in our after school programs. So instead of losing it, Instead of shouting across the room, you know, a lot of times people think that in order to get children's attention, we need to shout as loud as we can. Okay, uh, do a call back, you know, one, two, three, all eyes on me, you know, well, one, two, three, eyes on you. Um, you know, you hear all these different callbacks when actually. The softer you talk and the more calm you are, the more likely you are to get their attention. 
All right. So when you're working in an after school program and things do start getting a little chaotic and you need to pull those kids back in, all right, instead of losing it, we're going to stop, take a deep breath, and relax. All right, stop, take a deep breath, and relax. And you're going to pull those kids back in by using a softer tone, all right, rather than shouting across the room at them, all right? What we do to children, children will do to other children, okay? So what you do to the children, they will then do the same thing to the other kids. So if you're in an after-school program and you're shouting to get their attention, then in return, the children are going to shout to engage with the other kids, all right? Um, it kind of becomes a little shouting match. Who can be louder, the teacher or the kids? Um, and it just goes on and on and on. And I'm going to tell you right now, the kids will always win, all right? So stop, take a deep breath, relax. You have to be self-regulated before you can expect the children to self-regulate, all right? Now, I know in an after-school program, you typically have got a lot of kids, all right, a lot of kids in a very different environment that are coming in ready to blow, all right? So you got to start the afternoon with that calm, all right? Um, we even teach this in our preschool classrooms when I'm working with preschool and pre-K teachers and, and infant toddlers. But the way we greet the children sets the tone for the entire day. So with your after-school program, it's no different. So if you're picking the children up um, on the bus or they're being dropped off at your facility, the way you greet them and that instant download of calm is going to set the tone for the entire day. All right, and I can't tell you how many times I've been in after school programs and as the children are coming off of the bus, the caregiver is shouting and shouting, all right, to try to get the day started. That's setting the tone for the rest of the afternoon. And we wonder why everything is so chaotic. In order to maintain your composure, it's very important that you are aware of your triggers, all right? And we all have triggers. Um, triggers are um, those behaviors that uh, children say, children do, um, things that happen in your after-school program that you know is going to set you off and make you act like a fool. Um, those of you that are on the live Facebook event right now, um, if you're willing, type into the chat screen uh, something that is a trigger for you. What is something that uh, your school-age children, um, what is it something that they do that you know is a trigger that's going to set you off? Um, if someone is willing to, to type something in there, um, that would be helpful. All right, I'll give you all just a second um, to get something typed in. All right. So again, what is a trigger? Um, something that a child says, something that a child does uh, that you know is going to set you off, all right? Um, how about the child that um, immediately gets on the bus or comes into the after-school program and slams that backpack down and you know says, you're stupid, I don't wanna be here, all right? Um, when you've got that situation, you were hoping that you could go home where you could rest and be in your own environment. That's hard. It's hard when you've been at school all day long and now you have to come to the after school program. I'm here to keep you safe. All right. Um, you know, especially when that child's saying, you're stupid. All right. I don't want to be here. That is, a, that is a child that is in their emotional state. All right, so when you have a child that is in their emotional state, they need to feel loved. All right, they need to be nurtured. They need to be understood. 
okay? Um, how about that child that immediately comes into your after school program and just starts hitting another child for absolutely no reason? All right, we see that quite often too. Um, that other child was just a victim of circumstance, right? A uh, victim of circumstance. They happened to be a, a, in the wrong place at the wrong time. That was a child that, again, the bottle was just being shaken and shaken, um, and the frustration had to come out, all right? Now, what I recommend that you do is that work with your after-school uh, caregivers, those of you that are administrators, um, and I see a lot of your names. I know a lot of you are administrators, um, but if you are someone that works in an after-school program, um, write down your triggers. And administrators, I want you to work with your caregivers and write down your triggers. What are some of the behaviors that's going to set you off? Make a list of those triggers. Now, you're going to keep these to yourself. You're not going to hang them up. You're not going to post them on the bulletin board. Um, but you're going to go ahead and, and write these down and keep them to yourself. When you're able to write down your triggers, you're going to be more aware of them. All right? You're going to be more aware of them. When you are aware of your triggers, you're going to be able to self-regulate. When you know what behaviors that, that set you off, whether it's work. Okay, everybody, hopefully you are coming back with me right now. Um, Facebook decided once again to just shut us off. Uh, so um, you got to, like, once again, just love technology right there. So again, we're talking about composure in an after school program. Um, I'll wait for just a second to, uh, to see you all get back on right here. Um, but again, composure in an after-school program, we've talked about stop, take a deep breath and relax. We've talked about being aware of your triggers, um, being aware of those thoughts and those events that will set you off. Um, and then the next thing that we want to be aware of the difference between noticing and judging. All right. Now, judging comes from the brainstem and judging someone is a survival skill all right you cannot download calm when you judge somebody now noticing someone is an executive skill so you are able to problem solve and learn when you are noticing all right so work with your kids and work with your your caregivers everybody and knowing the difference between judging and noticing. So if I were to say something like, I just don't know how such a lovely girl can be so lazy. All right, now that's judging. Um, noticing would be, she's having a hard time getting started with her work. All right, so going back to those triggers, uh, that we shared um, before the video cut us off and we had to get started again, um, you know, that child is talking back, all right? I get very triggered by that child that is talking back versus that child is having a hard time having a calm conversation with me, all right? Um, so that's noticing right there. You know, that child is so mean. He bullies everybody versus that would be judging noticing would be that child doesn't know what words to use whenever they have a conflict all right my job is to lend the skill to them all right so notice the behavior rather than judging the child notice the opportunity for you to make a difference in that child's life Notice the opportunity for you to role model the appropriate behavior rather than judging. All right. Um, Paula, yes, I'm going to go with the hurricane um, is the reason for our technical issues today. Um, absolutely, Paula, let's do that. <laughs> All right. Very good. Um, so, um, the next thing is um, when you're evaluating your after school program and you're trying to create, you know, composure um, and maintain that composure in your after school program, 
I want you to notice the difference between um, an environment full of fear versus an environment full of safety. All right. Now, like I've mentioned a couple of times, the individuals that work in your after school programs are role models. All right. Even though we're dealing with seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 year old children, we still have that responsibility to role model the appropriate behavior. So instead of shouting at the child or yelling at the kid and telling them what they need to be doing, your job is to show them the acceptable behavior. You've got to model that behavior, all right? So instead of saying, you know, how many times have I told y'all no running in the classroom? All right, instead, you're going to tell the children, we walk in the classroom just like this. All right, we walk in the classroom just like this and model the acceptable behavior. All right, um, you know, how many times have I told y'all to push in your chairs when you're done with them? All right, so instead, push in your chair just like this so that everyone in the classroom will be safe. Model that behavior, explain that behavior. All right. When you shout and use that very loud tone of voice, um, you know, and, and again, we hear this in our after school programs quite a bit. Even as adults, when you're sitting here doing your work, doing your thing, and all of a sudden you hear someone scream across the building, or you hear someone scream outside, all right, what do we instantly do? We go, what was that? All right, at night when you're laying in bed, all right, you're laying in bed and you hear a noise outside and you're like, what was that noise? All right, and we stop breathing. All right, we freeze our diaphragm and we stop breathing, all right, to get that quietness so that we can see what's going on, all right? When actually what your brain is doing when you hear that screaming, when you hear that loud noise, um, and you go, <gasps> and your brain is asking, am I safe right now, all right? Am I safe? So when we talk about maintaining composure in your after school programs, the breathing part of it is so incredibly important. We want to keep that diaphragm moving, all right? When we, we want to keep that belly moving so that we can self-regulate and we can stay composed. But if you have an environment where there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of shouting, all right, there's a lot of activity, then you've got a lot of kids that are constantly going, Am I safe? Am I safe? All right. And the more they do that, the more they're stopping that diaphragm. All right. So once again, stop, take a deep breath, relax, and use a nice, calm voice to get the children's attention to engage them. That way we don't have that startled, what's going on? All right, now we have to practice this ourselves. All right, because even as the caregiver, we have different activities, we have different things that happen in the classroom. A child that you know slams a block up against the wall, a child that screams at another child, right? And when some of these things happen, even us, the adults, we go, <gasps> you know, and that's you asking. <gasps> Am I safe? All right. So when you go over to address this situation, okay, we're going to walk over. Johnny, you slammed the block up against the wall like this. You seem upset. What happened? All right. Now, when I say you slammed the block up against the wall like this, all right, he's going to notice you at that point. Johnny's going to look up. All right, you seem upset. Something happened. And using the word you seem upset, 
all right, is noticing. Now, if I say, you slammed the block up against the wall, you're angry, all right? Now, when I say you're angry or you're upset, that's judging, all right? I don't know what that child is feeling. Um, the only person that knows what that child is feeling is the child, all right? You seem upset rather than you are upset. Something happened, what happened? And then you're going to role model all right, the engagement, okay? Uh, so very important right there. Remember, and we've talked about this in so many of my trainings right here, but those that we put in charge of our feelings, we put in charge of us, all right? Those that you put in charge of your feelings, you put in charge of us. So when you allow the children to make you angry, when you allow the children to stress you out, when you allow the children to get you frustrated, you have put them in charge of your feelings, all right? So you've got to be in control of your feelings. No one can make you upset without your permission. No one can make you frustrated without your permission, all right? So I have definitely learned in my career working in after-school programs that sometimes I have to walk into a situation and I have to tell myself, I am not going to let this child stress me out, okay? I am not going to let this child make me upset today. I'm in control of my feelings. No matter what this child does, I'm not going to let them get me upset, all right? You've got to maintain control of yourself. All right, now you've got to maintain control of yourself. I did not say you have to get control of the classroom. All right, you have to get control of the after school program. You have to maintain control of yourself. And when I can keep myself composed, then I can download Calm and have a controlled classroom. But you can't make anyone do something, all right? The only person you can change is yourself. But the chaotic children and the bullies and the screamers and the talker backers, all right, all of the triggers that we mentioned earlier, okay, you can't change any of that behavior, all right? The only person you can change is yourself. And when I change myself, and I look at children through a different set of eyes, all right, then I can influence them to change themselves, all right? And that's big in an after-school program. And again, we've talked a whole lot today about being that role model, being that role model, all right? And I'm going to make changes within myself so that I can influence my children to self-regulate, to maintain control, and to treat others with respect. My job is to keep you safe. Your job is to help me keep it safe. All right. Um, I got a, a Facebook Live comment here that um, they, uh, can we ask children to draw a picture of how they feel? Absolutely. Um, and I would probably do it something like this. Um, when another child takes my toy, it makes me feel fill in the blank, all right? So whatever just happened, whatever the circumstance was, when, you know, another child takes my toy, it makes me feel angry. And yeah, why don't you draw a picture of how you feel, all right? Uh, when another child pushes me down on the playground, it makes me feel sad and let them draw that picture. Um, I think that's a wonderful idea and definitely a great technique right there. Um, when we talk about the five steps of self-regulation, that's actually step three of the five steps is being able to name your feelings. And to be able to draw that feeling is a great way for you to identify how are you feeling, all right? So um, since I brought it up, I'll go over it really quick. For those of you that aren't aware of it, 
But step one is to know that you are triggered. We talked about that earlier, being able to write down your triggers. All right. Um, know that you have been triggered. And remember, um, you are always the last person to know that you've been triggered. Everybody around you knows that you have been triggered except for yourself. All right. So before you can self-regulate and maintain composure, you have to be aware that you have been triggered. Step number two is to calm. So we're going to breathe. We're going to stop. Take a deep breath. Relax. Smile. Take a deep breath and relax. All right. Or whatever active calming technique works best for that child. Okay. Then we're going to be able, step three is to name your feelings. Okay. I am sad. I am angry. I am frustrated. I am upset. I am scared. I'm anxious. Whatever the feeling is. All right. And then we're going to choose. Step four is to choose. Now, when we're talking about conflict resolution, in order to, um, to solve a problem, the child has to choose to solve the problem. If you're forcing them to solve the problem, then you're going to have a negative outcome. All right? So the child has to be the one to choose to, to be the problem solver. All right? And, you know, a good example of this is something happens in your program, and you're like, tell her you're sorry. Tell her you're sorry. We're not going outside until you tell her you're sorry. Well, the kid's like, mm, 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 mm. And then finally they're like, sorry. All right? And in the moment you turn around, bam, they're going to hit them again because the choice wasn't theirs. All right? Um, and we see this a lot with, you know, in our classrooms, too. How many of y'all have witnessed, you know, a child that hits another child, and the moment they hit them, they're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right? Um, because it's just become words at that point. Now, when I am aware that I have been triggered, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to recognize that I was frustrated. All right? Um, Johnny took my toy, and I was frustrated. Now I feel really bad about hitting him. I shouldn't have hit him. All right? So now I'm going to make the choice to go over to Johnny and say, hey, I am so sorry that I hit you. Um, I got frustrated. I didn't know what words to use. Um, I shouldn't have hit you. All right? And that's what happens whenever we're using these five steps. And step number five is to solve the problem. All right? Next time, can you ask me, may I play with the toy when you're done? You know? And we can practice that right there. All right. Um, another really important thing to remember when maintaining composure in an after-school program is to be aware that children don't make us angry. Um, children's behavior brings out the anger inside of us. All right, so I want you to think about that. And it's not just children. We're talking about adults, too. People don't make you angry. People bring out the anger you have inside of you. So whatever the behavior is, whatever's going on in that after-school program, it's not making you angry. It's bringing out whatever anger you have built up inside of you. All right? So, you know, when we talk about maintaining composure in an after-school program, it's very important that the caregiver, the role, the role model, be conscious and aware of their own feelings and their own situations. And if I've got things going on in my personal life and I've got a lot of built-up anger or I've got a lot of built-up emotions due to whatever it is that's going on in my personal life, all right, me walking into that after-school program, that child triggering me is going to bring out all of that garbage that I've been keeping stuffed inside, okay? So y'all didn't know this was therapy, right? You're at a therapy session now. So, you know, being, being a role model in an after-school program, you've got to be very, very aware of your own personal needs, 
and your own personal self-help, all right? And are you dealing with these outside triggers that has got all this garbage uh, stored up inside of you, all right? Because whatever you've got inside of you, those kids are going to bring it out. Now, if I don't have anything inside of me, all right, if I'm, if I'm in a good place, I've worked through my issues, then when you've got conflict in your after-school program, I'm more able to maintain composure because there's nothing for that kid to pull out of me. Okay, hope that makes sense right there. Um, I love the comment that I've got on Facebook Live. The first trick to having happy students is to be happy yourself. All right, absolutely, I couldn't agree with that. And that, Stephanie, once again, goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of our training, mirror neurons, all right? When you are happy, when you are calm, all right, those mirror neurons is going to download that happy and that calm to your students. When I'm passionate about something that I do, when I'm passionate about my after school program, you're gonna download that passion to your students with those mirror neurons, all right? So yeah, you gotta do a lot of self-help right here, okay? You know, we, we've talked about this in previous webinars um, in, our, in our leadership uh, webinars that, you know, a big part of being a leader is to help adults with their own unresolved trauma. Um, we've got to help the adults in our program with the garbage that they're dealing with in their personal lives, all right? Because otherwise, all that garbage is going to come out in the classroom, all right? Um, but we talked about composure. This is pretty big right there, all right? Walk into that program with a smile. All right, so um, I'm just going to do a brief little um, um, overview of kind of what we've talked about in this Facebook Live. I know that we had some technical issues uh, there in the middle, um, which seems to be common uh, these days with these events. Um, but, you know, once again, um, realizing that when your children are coming into your after school program, they're coming from a very stressful situation and they're about to blow. So your composure, your calm, the moment you greet that child is very, very critical, all right? Because they're coming from a very stressful situation. We feed off of their emotions, they feed off of our emotions. So that's the importance of understanding the mirror neurons, all right? The energy that we give off, they're gonna pick up. The energy they give off, we're going to pick up. Okay, we're going to download calm all afternoon. All right, a big part of our job as after school people is to breathe, stop, take a deep breath, and relax. A lot of breathing in your after school program. Keep that belly moving, keep that diaphragm moving. We want to avoid the startle. <gasps> where the brain is asking, am I safe, okay? So, you know, and if you wanna do a little activity where you get a little sticky note and every time you catch yourself going, oh, put a little tick mark, all right? And at the end of the day, count it up. How many times did you do the oh, right there? That right there is gonna be a good indicator that we got a lot of work to do with composure in our after school program. All right, the building blocks to composure is to establish safety, to create those connections, and then create the opportunity for problem solving. What you focus on, you get more of. All right, is the child arguing with you? Is the child talking back? Or is the child creating an opportunity for a conversation? The perception is up to you. All right, and how you choose to perceive this is up to you, all right? Whoever you put in charge of your feelings, you put in charge of you. So you have to be in charge of your feelings and you have to be able to say, I'm not going to let that child make me upset today. Um, 
Children don't make you angry. Children bring out the anger inside of you. Children don't stress you out. Children bring out the stress that is inside of you. Know your triggers. Write down your triggers. Keep them to yourself. You're not going to post these, but be aware of your triggers right there. That's going to be um, writing them down is going to make you more aware and more conscious of those triggers. Um, and create an environment that is safe rather than an environment that is built on fear. All right. Um, that's a big part of a successful after school program. Know the difference between judging and noticing. All right. Judging is a survival skill. Noticing is an executive skill. So we want to notice the child rather than judging the child. All right. Um, and just once again, practice, practice, practice with the self, um, self regulation. Stop, take a deep breath and relax. We have to do this quite often. All right. So, uh, thank you all for joining me today for this Facebook live. Once again, um, I apologize for the technical issues, but, um, that's just the world we live in right now. The power of acceptance, right? Uh, so but I'll be able to take the two Facebook Lives and mesh them together, hopefully, um, and we'll have this posted uh, for, for those that missed it as one video. Um, and then I will post the, uh, the online worksheet for today's Facebook Live here in just a little bit. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, uh, rest of your week. Remember that our director and teacher workshops start this week. Um, we have one on Friday from uh, 9 to 12, um, and that's going to be a director workshop um, supporting your staff during difficult times. Um, Saturday is going to be our teacher workshop, once again from 9 to 12, and that's going to be safety and supervision techniques. Uh, so you can just join me right here on Facebook for those two events. Um, they work just like uh, the Tim at 10. Um, we also have our um, Director Credential 2.0 Advanced Course coming up next week, uh, September 1st through the 3rd. That is a three-day training that will be done on Zoom. So it's not a Facebook event. Um, that one is done on Zoom. Um, and you can get information on our website, timthetrainer.com. And then um, in a couple of weeks, we have our regular director credential course that is the four-day class for those of you that are looking to get your director um, education requirements. So lots going on um, in, the, uh, in the training world and the professional development world. Um, and again, thank you all so much for being with me today. And thank you for being patient with the technical issues. I will talk to you all very, very soon. Bye.